Station. I want to walk you through about six keys, six biblical principles that can help you transit from the prophetic speakings about your destiny to its actualization. And I want you to listen very carefully. Take notes if you can. Take notes. You should take notes so that you hide this in your heart and you walk in keeping with these truths i give you a guarantee in the name of the lord jesus christ that if you pay attention to these principles they will shift you from the realm of just having a prophetic awareness of your place in life and destiny to its manifestation may the lord help us in the name of jesus christ number one the first principle that comes as a demand for a glorious future is the power of vision the power of vision the power of vision proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 very popular scripture the power of vision the bible says where there is no vision the people perish where there is no vision what is vision a prophetic picture of where you are going what is vision the ability to see things as they should be not as they are vision is very powerful vision is very important it sets your life on course there are many believers who love jesus sincerely but they are not able to take strategic steps towards destiny actualization principally because they lack vision they pray they go to church they are sincere they are well intentioned but they lack vision vision is very powerful in jeremiah chapter 1 jeremiah chapter 1 when you read from verse 11 jeremiah chapter 1 this was a discourse between the young boy jeremiah and the god of heaven who was announcing to him his call and preordination moreover verse 11 now the word of the lord came unto me saying jeremiah what seest thou what do you see and he said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Verse 12. He said unto him, Thou hast well seen. In other words, you have seen correctly amplified, we say. He says, I will hasten my word. The word and the vision you have seen, I will give it the strength for performance. Vision is very powerful. Among the many things that vision achieves in the life of of the believer the visionary is number one vision gives you a legitimate ground to say no to many things if you are not a man or a woman of vision it is going to be very difficult for you to say no to many things and you don't have to say no to only sinful and wrong things there are many good things that should not be part of your um your the blueprint of your destiny they may be good but they may not be profitable for you you see so vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no primarily no to sin primarily no to anything that is antichrist but much more than that no to things that may be good but maybe not profitable for the the path destined and preordained for you there are many good things in life that are not necessary as far as the prophetic description of your destiny is concerned vision gives you that legitimate ground number two vision gives you focus vision gives you focus a visionary person is also a very focused person you coordinate your energy you coordinate your resources spiritual resources material resources intellectual resources towards a common goal towards a predefined something very specific you stop shadow boxing and running around trying to do everything vision gives you focus let me tell you this vision helps you select the people and the conditions that matter most in your life vision would help you to select the right spouse vision will help you to select the right friends vision will help you to select the right location many things depend on vision so if you do not have vision in your life chances are excellent that you're going to live your life hoping that circumstances just decide the things that you become 
all you do may god forbid that over your life in the name of jesus so this is a call for someone listening someone hearing someone following it's time that you sat down with your destiny to look very carefully am i am i living a life of vision what motivates me when i wake up in the morning what motivates me what justification do i have to lie down and sleep what would i say i've done with the gift of the 24 hours per day that i've been given you see let me tell you this the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you are giving a part of your destiny to and you must ensure that you are governed by vision the lord will help us in the name of jesus very quickly number two is the power of light the second key that you would need the demand for the kind of destiny that brings glory to the name of the lord is the power of light high level spiritual illumination you need knowledge this is a kingdom that operates by light i come again this is a kingdom that operates by light it operates by knowledge you cannot use guesswork you cannot use your emotions to navigate your way along the path of destiny you will need light specific light as it um as it it concerns the area you have been called to serve hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 very popular scripture hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 i presume that someone is really getting blessed hosea 4 and verse 6 it says my people are destroyed they are my people but they are still destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest unto me my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 very very challenging scripture here's what it says the labor of the foolish weary yet every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city not because there is no city not because there is no glorious destiny he does not know how to go to the city so it's about knowledge he has the feet that can take him there but he does not have the know-how knowledge is very important in this kingdom knowledge is very important in this kingdom how do you get knowledge by the truth it will cost you the bible says to buy the truth you don't just get the truth you buy the truth that means the truth is costly listen what do you use to buy the truth number one you use humility and meekness to buy the truth these are currencies the truth is an expensive commodity you can use humility as a currency to buy the truth you can use meekness as a currency to buy the truth you can use honor as a currency to buy the truth you can use passion as a currency to buy the truth you can use hunger as a currency to buy the truth when it has to do with buying the truth it may be free but it is not cheap it will cost you something there are many arrogant people unfortunately uh, and respectfully speaking especially uh, our generation of young people there is such arrogance in the midst of ignorance it's amazing how our lives can be simplified just by submitting ourselves to superior knowledge. Can I tell you this? When you submit yourself to knowledge, it does not demean or downplay what you already are. In fact, it gives you an opportunity to rise higher. Can you imagine Jesus Christ who was the Word made flesh according to the book of John 1? The Word made flesh. Yet, Jesus was found in the temple at age 12 what would the world need to do in the temple again the bible says he was at the temple learning under the scribes and the pharisees this was the word incarnate the very logos of god who became flesh and yet he submitted himself to learning we must submit ourselves to learn we must submit ourselves to grow there are dimensions of growth that the bible seeks to be captured in our lives it is important that we learn it is important that we learn colossians chapter 1 
and verse 9 paul was encouraging the church in Colossae, and he encouraged them he said for this cause we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will number one you might be filled with all wisdom number two number three you might be filled with all spiritual understanding acts chapter 20 and verse 32 Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Here's what the Bible says. 32. Acts 20 and verse 32. It says, I commend you, brethren, to God and to the word of his grace. I commend you, brethren, to God and to the word of his grace, which is able. This is what the word of God is able to do. It's able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified very powerful light knowledge when i started out in life and ministry i realized that i had so much ignorance in my life and i made up my mind as a covenant with my own destiny that i will contend for light high level spiritual illumination i have never stopped being a student of knowledge it will be my default state for the rest of my life i thank god for that which he has helped me to know and to help me to see but it will have to be from glory to glory hallelujah the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you very powerful song the more i know you the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. You always know those who know by their passion and their desire to know more. Paul, one who epitomized the spirit of revelation in the New Testament, he said that I may know him. In the height, it was Paul that wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. And yet he cried that I may know him and the power of his resurrection we must stop uh, we must destroy this arrival mentality and this local champion mentality and begin to contend for high level spiritual illumination and let me tell you this in getting knowledge you have to the first kind of knowledge you need is the ability to look for what you do not know more than just getting information if there is a kind of knowledge you need to learn how to search for what you do not know the bible giving a parable said that the kingdom of god operates on this wise a woman who lost a coin in a room and the bible says the first thing she did was to light a lamp and when she lit that lamp she took a broom and started sweeping until she found that which was lost do you know how to light that lamp and do you know how to sweep until you find that which is missing the power of light number three the third demand for a glorious destiny is the power of a transformed mind i can spend this entire session just discussing this one the power of a transformed mind in proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 here's what the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart he says so is he for as he thinketh, he didn't say so he will become he already is the bible equates your life and your destiny to the health of your thoughts psychologists and ministers of the gospel this is where both science psychology and religion agree that every man will ultimately be an a physical expression of the health or otherwise of his thoughts your thoughts are very powerful you attract to your life physical scenarios physical things that will match up the level of your thinking now most believers and i say this respectfully most believers in church focus on their spiritual development which is profitable but they ignore their mind 
because for many they have not been taught the roles that their minds have to play as far as actualizing destiny is concerned it takes more than the health of your spirit to be able to fulfill destiny for as he thinketh in his mind or heart so is he the bible says in psalm 78 and verse 41 very popular scripture i like to use this every time i teach about the mind the bible says yea psalm 78 41 yea they turned back and tempted god and limited the holy one of israel the first time i found this scripture i found it shocking how could a man limit the unlimited god but the bible says they limited the holy one of israel Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brethren, it says, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, it says, If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on the things that are honest. Think on the things that are true, just, pure, lovely, of good report. It leaves you with that assignment. Culture the information that gets into your mental space, he says. They have an implication on your destiny. This is very important. Very, very important. Your mindset is an authorized channel for both the Holy Ghost and demon spirits to access your life. Superior belief system. What is a belief system? A belief system is a paradigm, is a perspective, is a viewpoint, a plane of judgment. For many of us, we have shipped in several belief systems from culture, from our pasts, from our failures, from our levels of exposure, from our, you know, um, associations, and all of these thought lines that we have carried, we have brought them to our minds, and for some of us, in spite of the fact that we love the Lord sincerely, we have allowed these tumbling blocks of limiting beliefs, beliefs that make you believe that you cannot excel, either because of gender or because of age, belief systems that make you believe that you have to be corrupt and to manipulate your way wrongly to be successful, belief systems that encourage laziness and entitlement mentality, belief systems that make people feel that when you fail once, it means you are a failure. All of these are belief systems that you have to conquer. When Satan came to Jesus to test him, he said, it is written. In other words, my mind has been framed by this. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. The word let means permit this mind to be in you. Jesus had a mindset that made him excel. He didn't just excel because he was the son of God. Listen carefully. There was a mindset and he says, let this mind or let this belief system be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. May I request where you are that you just speak in one minute over your mind and decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, I contend for a transformed mind. A transformed mind is not, is not an impartation. You, you buy the truth and you change your belief system by bringing in new superior word compliant information into your mental space. Declare in one minute that in the name of Jesus, you may wish to lay your hands on your head and make that declaration that in the name of Jesus, I declare my disloyalty to any mindset, any paradigm, any belief system that is antichrist. It may be culturally right. If it is scripturally wrong, throw it away. It may, it may conform. It may, it may appease your current status quo. But if it will not take you to the place of destiny, you have to get it away. Let me show you a scripture. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Very powerful scripture. Now unto him. 320 Ephesians he says. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now look at me very carefully. Here's what the Bible says. That God can do what we ask for and God can do what we think. If I tell you sit down at my, my left or sit down at my right, what I'm trying to suggest is that whether you sit at the left or right, whichever, 
um, one does not seem to have an advantage over the other if i say sit at my left or my right it means you can derive equal advantage or similar advantage regardless where you sit now the bible says god is able to do above all that we ask or think you may have heard it say you have heard me say it in my teachings that your asking and your thinking are both prayer warriors there are two ways to pray one is by verbalizing the other is by thinking that your mind is also a prayer warrior it is not just what you ask by verbalizing alone that is answered he says god can do what you ask or think so your asking can say god open a great door for me god bring destiny help us while your thinking says god forget about that prayer i'm comfortable with a small life the bible says it is within the power of god to answer both prayers could it be that your mind has been stopping many things that your lips has been asking for you've been saying god open me up to a new world of prosperity influence the anointing grace and your mind is saying god i do not need it i'm comfortable where i am once there is a conflict between your saying and your thinking you will never have a result the bible says let not that man think he shall receive anything from the lord the power of superior beliefs so I've taught you three keys so far. Demands. Number one, a quick recap, is the power of vision. Number two, the power of light. High level spiritual illumination. Number three, the power of a transformed mind. Sustaining superior belief systems. And let me tell you this. Belief systems are not generated. They are outsourced. You have to outsource from a... a um, from and an environment that may be strange to what you have known so far you must be comfortable to bring in new superior ideas you must be open-hearted enough to allow new superior ideas to come in for instance probably you've never been taught that god can use you just as you are looking at me you may think i'm frail i'm limited but now you must entertain a new word-based idea that God is able to use me. That he does not just call the qualified, he can qualify those he calls. Number four. I'll give you this as the last one and then we'll pray for this session. Pray and trust that the Lord would hide in our hearts all that we have learned so far. A man's gift. You can replace that word gift with a man's value. The Bible assures you that the, a man's value can make room for him and that it bringeth him before great men. A man's gift, the Bible says, maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. This is a very powerful statement. A man's gift, any man can make room for him like an usher it can take you from a background of shame and reproach to a background to a, a a life of honor and beauty and color and glory the power of value what is value value is a measure listen carefully value is a measure of your usefulness to your world your usefulness to your 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 generation your usefulness your ability to solve problems your ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful to your sociological context this is very powerful value does not just mean your usefulness as a person we are all useful but the 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 value the usefulness the solution providing ability that you can bring to the table of greatness i'm sitting here on a beautiful chair and a table call this the table of greatness if you want to sit here life demands that there must be something you have to offer you're not just going to be granted access to sit upon the table of greatness bringing nothing so for someone this may be your value wisdom for someone this may be your value creativity for someone this may be your value in whatever area 
the most important thing is to make sure that you are bringing something to the table for someone he's a preacher he's bringing the value of the anointing the power of god for someone he's bringing the value of productivity i'm holding a beautiful mug here you know that contains my drink and this as wonderful as it is this is an invention of someone's creativity this can preserve whether it is something cold or hot it has the ability to keep it strangely for a very long time this is value now whoever did this is ushered into the table of greatness you can come and sit there is a device here in my hand this device is someone's brainchild there is a beautiful map of the world here to inspire me that i have all the time this is someone's value what do you have to bring to the table of greatness what can your world appreciate and celebrate you for this is very very important most people want to be acknowledged they want to be great but they do, they have not paid attention to discover and build their value this is what i learned so powerfully from my dearly revered mentor dr miles Monroe. he taught on the power of value let me show you a scripture that has blessed me through the years mark chapter 1 let's start from verse 35 this was um a capture of jesus's evangelical exploits he moved from place to place blessing people and you know after a full day of of crusades and all of that the bible says and in the morning verse 35 rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed 36 Simon and they that were with him followed after him and then verse 37 the Bible says when they have found him when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee let me repeat something that has become an anthem in my life that there are things when you carry only your tribes people will look for you there are graces and gifts and value that when you carry only young people will look for you there are things that when you carry only the poor will look for you there are things when you carry only the rich will look for you but there are treasures of value that when you carry the bible says all men seek for you diplomats men of god students young people business people politicians captains of industry academicians people in the media no matter what where they are there are graces that when you carry all men will seek for you when i found this scripture i made a covenant with my life and my destiny that i will contend for the kind of value that will cause kings to come even to the brightness of your rising may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ may that be your testimony that i will be so valuable i will capture within my life that which takes away shame forever that which takes away a sense of competition forever listen to me there is a realm of value that lifts you beyond the realm of competition there is a a realm of value that lifts you beyond the realm of um, jealousy and all of these petty things you see some of the problems we have in our world today especially among young people is because they have not contended for the kind of value that brands your impact and puts you in a class by grace where there is no need for competition there is no need for jealousy and all of these things because god would have so exalted you by your value may that be your testimony listen you never find traffic in the air in america i'm sure like it is in in most parts of the world there are regions especially cosmopolitan cities you can find traffic and people are are held up in traffic for hours hours in Nigeria here we are ministering from parts of Lagos Abuja and you know some of the cosmopolitan cities you can find traffic and you can be in a log jam for hours but you never find that in the air I've never had an occasion where um, the pilot told us to have to stand in the air because there are other planes passing and we have to be patient once we lift we are there until we land there might be a problem there might be uh, cues to lift but once you lift and you get to the air that's it 
So become a high flyer by becoming extremely valuable. Valuable to your world, valuable to your church, valuable even there in the United States of America, whatever part of the world you're watching from. The beautiful thing about value is that value was designed to be appreciated and rewarded anywhere you are in the world. Some regions may have a higher appreciation for your value, but I guarantee you when you step into the realm of mastery and competence in value, regardless where you are across the globe, it will lift you and bring you to a point of notoriety and honor. Take away shame and reproach from your life. Take away sadness and regrets. Take away the pressure to want to be like this or that by becoming distinctively valuable in the name of jesus now wherever you are i want you to begin to pray begin to pray and declare over your life father in the name of jesus i obtain grace to be visionary i obtain grace by the power of the holy ghost i will be a man and a woman of vision i will be a man and a woman of vision in the name of jesus i take away distractions from my life distractions that come from negative relationships i commit myself to the discipline of vision are you praying open your mouth and pray let it be from the depth of your heart i make a resolution obtaining grace from god that from tonight from today morning afternoon whatever time it is there i am praying for myself and i decree and declare in the name of jesus you will be a man of vision a woman of vision by the power of the holy spirit now you pray that i contend for light light i buy books some of you may need to leave after this broadcast and go to your library go and get books go on youtube download valuable messages that speak to the areas of need or concern and camp with the truth camp with the truth until it transforms you how long should i press for knowledge until you are delivered because knowledge has the power to deliver it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered are you praying in the name of Jesus I contend for high level light why am I not enjoying good membership in my church why am I not enjoying favor it could be that there is something I do not know Lord I take responsibility for my life and my destiny full responsibility I throw away blaming pastors blaming government blaming people I take full responsibility and I obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ to begin to contend for light in the the areas of darkness the areas of darkness you shine that light until darkness gives way John 1 5 says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not go ahead and pray I obtain grace Lord I take responsibility over the areas of ignorance could be that you are doing well in your life spiritually but financially things are not working well it could be that you've gotten light in the area of finances but you don't understand the principles of relationships you don't have friends you drive away all your destiny helpers because there is something you do not know attack ignorance with a level of fierce determination i make up my mind that ignorance will be far from my life go ahead and pray now pray for superior beliefs lord i decree and declare again through the power of light and quality materials i buy the truth with humility i buy the truth with meekness i throw away pride what i do not know i stop arguing about i will go to find out the truth from those that sell he said go to them that sell and buy go to them that sell and buy there are custodians of wisdom there are custodians of truth there are custodians of knowledge with proven track records in ministry there are custodians in business there are custodians in whatever aspect of your life you have no excuse to remain in darkness our world today and the internet has given us access to find high level spiritual illumination across the areas of concern go ahead and pray lord i repent for carelessness in contending for light i obtain grace i obtain grace in the name of jesus christ now listen very carefully before i continue on the sessions i just sense in my heart that it is time for someone to come to jesus you might be saying apostle i've been so blessed and inspired just hearing you 
But my own challenge is that I've not even started the journey. I have not come to Jesus who the Bible says is the way, the truth and the life. Remember, the Bible says the labor of the fool were yet every one of them because he does not know the way. The way is not just a path. The way is a person. And that person is Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus came as God's gift to us from heaven and he came and paid the price for your sin defeated hell satan sin the grave resurrected triumphantly and now has given you an opportunity to be reconciled back to the father you may be following from your home following from your room sitting on your sofa just listening to this preacher from africa and the holy spirit is speaking to you now is the time to win that war now is the time to hand over everything to jesus I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Very powerful song. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. That should be your prayer. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Now I want to lead you to Jesus Christ. Hear me. I'm holding on my hands this Bible this contains the truth of God's Word and revealed in this Bible is the love of the Father expressed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ John chapter 3 and verse 16 says for God so loved the world listen carefully for God so loved you call your name for God so loved you, for God so loved Joshua Selman, that he gave his only begotten son, the Bible says, that whosoever, whosoever, preacher, black, white, African, Asian, American, European, the Caribbeans, wherever, male, female, old, young, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life i want to lead you now to make this prayer mean it from the depth of your heart you are praying this prayer with me i want you to place one hand on your chest as a sign of surrender and say this from the depth of your heart that's right i'm talking to you place your hand and say this after me say lord jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I have heard today that you died for me you rose again for my justification you conquered sin you conquered death you conquered hell you conquered the grave all for me right now I make Jesus Lord of my life Savior of my soul and King of my destiny. I obtain forgiveness for sins and I decree and declare that from now until the rest of my days I am a recipient of the life of God. I am a child of God. I decree and declare that I am saved, born again, born anew, a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you father I pray for my precious viewers in the name that is above all names they have declared the Lordship of Jesus over their lives I commend them by the power of the Holy Spirit to the ministry of the word to build to establish them even in righteousness I declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven 
and the power of sin the power of hell the power of the grave and of satan is broken over your life you are recipients of the life of god born anew by the grace of god i declare and i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus you go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now let me give you a minute or two to invite everyone else around you as we take this second part of the session i want you to do that from this four principles alone i'm sure that you've learned something and there might be someone around you who needs to join the remaining part of this broadcast call them let them know that jesus is speaking to their destinies let them know that this is a new beginning for them that light is coming and darkness is about to be driven